This is how this leaf placemat came out of the dryer, almost as crisp and flat as it went into the washer. And through the magic of video, here it is after being steamed with my iron for a few seconds. Peltex responds well to heat and steam, flattening right back out. With a little planning, taking into account the natural tendencies of your materials, the possibilities are limitless for making seasonal, holiday, and everyday decor. If you've seen instructions for making rectangular or oval-shaped placemats from forms, the principles are similar, but we're going to complicate things a bit. In this course, I'm making a leaf, but you can design just about any shape that you can draw, stitch, and turn. You may have to simplify areas. You can create a little bit of surprise when you clear the table and people see what their placemat actually looks like. And it's all about what's inside. Let's get started. This ultra firm stabilizer is Peltex 71F. It's the kind with the fusible on one side. Today I'm making leaves from patterns. You can download my patterns, but I'm also going to quickly show you how to make your own. When it's time to draw something, it's always nice to get a little inspiration. I like to refer to print fabrics when I'm free motion quilting for different leaf shapes to practice quilting, but you can also look at leaves on fabric for ideas on how to draw these. Another, maybe even better source of inspiration, if you can, either go out in your yard or to a nearby park and gather up some leaves that are nicely shaped for making a placemat. I have a grape leaf, some kind of sweet potato vine, hibiscus, lilac, a linden tree leaf, Virginia creeper, or woodbine, more linden tree leaves. These last three are from my Mayday tree. I'm going to pick a leaf I like and draw my placemat. It has faint red veins as well as being finely serrated along the perimeter. Now the leaf I'm doing is imaginary and I can do anything I want, but I'm going to refer to this real leaf while I'm drawing it. So I make a little stem and I'll have it kind of angle to one side the size that we cut our Peltex, which is the size that we're making our pattern, is pretty close to the finish size of the placemats. And so I'm just going to draw this and figure out what I'm doing. I have it sketched out in pencil now, and then I'm going to fill it in with some Sharpie so that you can see. And I'm going to draw my shape similar to the actual leaf, and I'll show where the veins are going to go to remind myself later. I'm also going to make some little serrations, but instead of messing with trying to make the outside edge finely serrated, I'm just going to do the indication of kind of an interior serration along the inside edge, which I'm going to stitch and then paint. I'm also drawing these areas that are damaged in purple in case I ever want to add those areas to do a leaf that's a little more realistic. So now I'm just going to cut this out with my junky scissors, my paper scissors. Now this freezer paper really wants to curl and it's a little hard to work with. But if I iron this on to a scrap of fabric that I have near the iron, in this case it's a piece of canvas, so that the shiny side sticks nicely to fabric but then it pulls off cleanly. If I do that, what I have left is a very well behaved pattern that's nice and flat. Here I am repeating the process with more of a lunch size plate or a salad plate that's clear and I'm using a hibiscus leaf as my inspiration. I like the way the edge of this leaf is gently scalloped and so I try to recreate that. If you wanted to use a photo and put a grid on it and then draw a grid onto your freezer paper so that you could more precisely imitate nature, you could do that. I'm usually pretty comfortable freehanding this kind of thing, but there are certainly other things you can do. When I'm done, I cut this out. It's also a little bit curly, so I flatten it by ironing it to my canvas and pulling it off. And then you can see that I've darkened in the lines so that you can see my veins and the edge that I'm going to do on this one around this scallop. Now I have two patterns to work with. Okay, so I'm showing you this because I'm doing one more and it's a monstera leaf and it's more of a tropical summer leaf. And I'm doing this one because it exaggerates everything and so we can talk about everything. Here it is. A good pattern takes these things into consideration. A five to six inch opening allows me to get my hand in there all the way inside. 
I prefer a straight opening, but a gentle curve is the next best thing. We're going to manhandle the Peltex while protecting our stress points. Simplified areas are good. We can suggest a particular leaf without including every detail. I'll address these areas with stitching and paint instead of having the leaf cut in so deeply. The perimeter shouldn't be too delicate. I try to avoid any bad bottlenecks. We have to be able to get in there to turn the work. A bottleneck could really ruin a project. If we can do all this while creating something that is both attractive and recognizable, we're well on our way. This would look really nice on a glass uh, patio table, not necessarily as placemats, but if you put a couple of these in the center of your table and then you could set your salt and pepper and some candles on there, whatever, it would look, I think, really pretty.